on this week's nonsensible podcast. They make this happen now. They take the sperm of two guys and they make the sperm into uh, one mega sperm. And ovule. <laughs> yo, how sick would that baby be? Let's yo, let's love each let's love each other for who we are now and let's kiss. Voldemort has entered the room. Voldemort has entered the room. Or Kane from WWE. Jay tweeted on his millions of followers, <laughs> K-pop <laughs> Twitter. This is Nonsensible. Welcome to Nonsensible with Sam uh, David. Super often guest me. Who are you? Uh, my name's Saul. Saul, there we go. Yeah, it's all good. And this is Julian. Hello, Julian guys. is Bonjour. is a DJ, a, a club dude, a, a, club a TV dude. star, <laughs> a master, a masterful <laughs> Korean speaker, and a philanthropist. A fl- uh, he's a walking a- a- uh, bus bu- bucket challenge. Ah, philanthropy though, I think it needs to be a certain amount of money you gave to be able to like, count it as philanthropy. <laughs> I'm I'm someone that give money away a little bit. <laughs> it's yeah. not the philanthropy level. Yet. I don't know. I've done some shit with you before where you brought oh. like a hundred people to, to bring coal to families who didn't have enough money. Yeah, to we did. We did some family. charity work together. Yeah. But even, even the other day, it was your birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, brother. Yeah, and I noticed that on Instagram, you asked that people donate to a good cause instead of yeah. giving you gifts. So I guess, yeah, the philanthropy is right there. It's for, I, that's one of the things I think yeah. of when I think of… What do you think of when you think of Julian, Dave? <laughs> Just get him plastered in, <laughs> in a club. Just get him plastered. <laughs> Hangovers. <laughs> uh, when I think of him, I think of tequila and I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Just, Just hot girls surrounding Julian. Yeah. When he's very responsible, <laughs> but when he goes he's over that, <laughs> when he takes that one last shot, Julian gets fucking crazy a little bit. Oh right? yeah, because I actually I used to live with Salt for yes um, two years. Yeah, two we years. lived together a long time. Yeah, so I mean we have a close relationship, and we saw a lot of each other's. Yeah, and uh, sometimes you, he would jump into my window when I was not wearing my clothes. <laughs> You know what he does when he gets drunk? He kisses. He, yeah. he gives. He, you always give me a lot of cute little kisses. I, I'm, I'm, I become very affective to yeah. people I like. Like I call my mom drunk and I'm like, mom, I love you. It's the best I miss kind you of so drunk. much. Is, is, is that is that a Belgian thing? Like is that generally how you'd say hello to people by kissing them? Like is that a cultural thing? No. I oh mean, yeah. I mean, normally when we say hello to people, we do like uh, kiss on the cheek. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but I'm I think particularly a bit more affective than. Regular Belgian people, but Belgian people usually, you know, they're quite friendly. They know mm-hmm. to have some kind of chong, like in yeah. Korea, yeah. you know. Has anyone else here been to Belgium? No. It's not like the most popular country in the world to travel. To be honest, no. no I was gonna. It was, have you been? To, where have you been? To have yeah. you been to Europe? Yeah, I've been to Europe. I've been to the Czech Republic. Uh, oh. Wow. I've been to Germany. I've been to um, Austria. I just realized we never talked about. Dude, places you've traveled. Europe was overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Europe is overrated. You didn't have that oh, much really? fun. Which way? In which way? I'll, 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 I won't go too in deep into it. I'll just give like a two minute spiel. You know why I think it's overrated? Because as an American through the internet, I've seen like, you know, ah. it's, you know, Americans are so, you know, this way and that, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I've had a con- conception of Europeans that Europe is this very high class, like, I guess, Part of the world, uh, and <laughs> okay, it, wrong idea. You know, it, you know, so I go there expecting to be culturally enlightened. Uh-huh. And oh, welcome culture! Like you know, just so much history, so much art, so just uh-huh. fashion, and everything. <laughs> Koreans dress way better, first of all. Koreans dress well, better than you fucking went to everybody. Austria, and it's <laughs> don't expect Austrians to be the high top dresses. Oh, I don't want to sound come off as race, but I was just expecting to be my, okay, culturally mind white. blown. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, it's, but it's, all it was the fashion labels come from. They were savage over there. <laughs> this really reminds me. My girlfriend and I were talking about. We, I was saying everywhere. let's go to France, and I'm like, it's probably crazy expensive. We can't do it. She's like, you guys are fooled. Everyone thinks that French people are so fancy. You know why they're riding around in bicycles with baskets with baguettes in it? Because they're fucking broke. <laughs> <laughs> they're broke. That's all they can afford is bread. You know why they're drinking wine in the streets? It's not because it's romantic. It's because they can't afford to sit in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with some part of yeah, that. Yeah, is that crazy? I don't know. When you know, she you, said that, I, was, I wanted to make it like a stand-up set. <laughs> but actually talking about that, you know that there's, there's this stuff in Japan really known to be the, the Paris Syndrome. 
Yeah. Where they had exactly what you said. They think of Paris being mm. this so romantic country and they arrive there and someone steals their bag and they're like, what happened? You know, it yeah. smelled like… Really? Like you, you, have to pay, you have to pay to go to the bathroom. Yes. Like public ba- restrooms you have to pay to go into. So like you Everyone's turn around the corner busy? and it stinks every, everywhere. It stinks. That's wild, man. <laughs> it's having a, it's said a little that, overrated. That- having said that, I went to Belgium. I, went to, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Bruges? You went to Bruges. Oh. That was like… That place is amazing. And the thank you the guest house we stayed at the woman's like don't drink the same beer twice, and I said what's up with that and she's like we have like four hundred different types of beer that we make in Belgium. Ooh, she's like try a new one every time. That's hot. Yeah. And we did. That sounds fun. <laughs> we got and she we drank four hundred beers in one week. Yeah, we, pretty much. <laughs> I'm pissed pretty much. all over the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, there's every youth hostel has a bar in it, and yeah. shots go for like a dollar. So mm. yeah, it was fun. That sounds really fun. It's beautiful though. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's incredible. It's gorgeous. I was the sights and the architecture is gorgeous. Yeah. So really, like when 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 you're in Korea, there's something that I miss sometimes is this sense because here there's no unity of <laughs> construction. Unity doesn't like yeah, even yeah, sure. the architecture. The concept, there's nothing in Belgium yeah. in, in Spain. There's a guy at the at the uh, at the city hall. His job is to choose which color you can paint your house in, and you cannot do other colors and stuff like that. Uh-huh. It's super strict. Yep. But in Korea, sometimes you know, it's like one guy decided he wanted to have a castle here. So especially when you go to the old motels and the old wedding halls yeah. in the south of Korea and everything, sometimes they get crazy. Like it's yeah. there's like a tower on the top of something? a building. It's like when you see a boat on the cliff that's a hotel. Yeah. Have you seen those big? They're like big cruise ships here oh, in Korea. Oh yeah, I, I've seen that one. Oh, like in like in Kapil and stuff like that. Yeah, there's no. there's a few around in the country. Like in Gangwon-do, yeah. yeah, there's some in Gangwon-do. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's just random ass architecture yeah, everywhere. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just completely stands out. Yeah, but when you go to Europe, this because the house are really all they're made yep. of stone, so it's easy to preserve. And Spain, Barcelona for me is like the top of uh, building wise. I really love way more than than I think. France is a bit colder, the architecture. And Austria for me is like too, too yeah, German yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of architecture. Have you been to Barcelona? No, I haven't been to Barcelona. I wanted to I wanna go. Really? It's Barcelona and the other place I want to go to that I heard was amazing was Florence in Italy. I heard yeah. it's oh. amazing. Mm. But it's 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 even too much there. I remember I went on a school trip to Florence and our teacher like like made us visit so much church that at the end, you know. One, the first one, you're like, wow, it's amazing. And then you see the second one, you're like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you see the third one, you're like, and then, and then you're like, it's like I don't want to see more beautiful yeah, things. When I travel, I don't want to see shit like that. I want to, I want to see like that for maybe a day. And then the rest of it, I want to drink with people. You yeah, know? I want to like yeah. eat food and drink with people. When do, it, do what the locals do. Anyway. Yeah. Live like I, a local. I didn't enjoy drinking in Europe, man. No? <laughs> Dude, they, oh man, they're, oh. But it depends which… Uh, which drank country. too much? I, I wasn't… Okay, I drank a lot in the Czech Republic. Oh yeah, they did not drink. Could be. Yelling at me and stuff like that. Just people yelling in my face. For like… Just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ almighty. Like, no reason. Just… Oh, she's a I love you, YouTube. Yeah, just Inter- man. Yeah. That's a different kind of drunk over there, man. It's just, yeah. It's different over there. <laughs> did so, you travel alone? No, I went for like Korean TV shit. Uh-huh. But I, I'm, at night, we were allowed to do whatever we wanted. Oh, nice. so. Have you ever traveled alone? No, I've traveled alone once before I went to the States and traveled alone over there for like two weeks. How was it? I it, it, I don't know. It was kind of a weird experience for me. I think it's traveling alone in the right place can be great. Yeah. But I think if you go to the wrong city, it can be really like lonely. Oh, yeah. Um, I met some interesting people and had fun and I, I had a great experience. But I think it was it was a good time for me to just kind of sometimes you need that alone time just to gather your thoughts. That's what I used it for. But it wasn't like, you know, yeah, I arrived alone, the middle part was alone, I left alone. <laughs> where yeah. did you um where did you feel alone specifically? You said in certain places you felt alone. Can I ask what places? Like, I, I think like for me, doing certain activities on your own is fine. But I guess it was like eating meals, like three meals a day and at night. Like you just, you go to the bar and you kind of straight up to a stranger and try and start conversation. Just hope that they'll see. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's it's conversation, sure, but it doesn't really turn into anything else. When was this? Was this before you were well-known in Korea or after? Uh, would have been after the birth of my second son. So it wasn't oh, that long. It was oh, not long. So, Did yeah. people recognize you in other countries? Do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
But you know, like, like that there's one thing that there's a movie, it was Paris, I Love You, about different stories of different people. Mm-hmm. And there's one story that I remember about this American uh, woman. She lives alone. She has a, one dog that she loves. And it's the first time that she, she, she saved money to go travel to Paris. And then she traveled to Paris. She's alone. And then at one point, she's on top of a beautiful uh, church. And she says, like, I'm saddened that I can't share this moment with someone. And I think like traveling, you know, a lot is about, hey, you like this food too? And then yeah, the guy is next exactly. to you is like, oh, I love it. And like, yeah. wow, it tastes a bit like this. And then, you know, there's this kind of discovering something new together yeah. is, is a big part of traveling. Mm-hmm. And when you have nobody to share with, of course, we all have Instagram, but <laughs> that's a totally different experience. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I can share with people all around the world. What and is it? No, go, go ahead first. I was, yeah. was going to say, like, it, but it would be nice if we just appreciated moments for, for what they were. Mm. Now, like David Cho guy, we were talking about their podcast last week. He like said he was like in a village in like the Congo and he brought all these art supplies and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And he brought these colors that they had never seen, right? Because they like live in the fucking woods and shit. So he brought them like these neon colors and all this stuff. And everybody was painting and having a great time. And he said at the end, like, he, he was like, man, I'm going to take this shit back let them sell their artwork and make money for the whole village. And he said he turned around and all the kids had thrown all the artwork they had made off of a fucking cliff. And he was like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? And they're like, we, we felt it. We were there. That was, that was the experience. Mm-hmm. Was the we don't need to save things yeah. like the same way that we do. It'd be nice if the same thing went for like traveling. Like if we didn't have to, you know, if we like f- just felt the moment. We didn't feel like we had to like take a picture of it, ah, yeah. send it to another person for it to like mean mean something. All right, right. I mean? all right. Mm. And, uh, sorry. On that note, let me ask you this then, because when you go to concerts these days, one thing that bugs the oh, shit out of me is That's watching so people hold their phone up and watch the concert while they record it. So we're we're in a digital era right now where everything's digital, but. Has it made our life any better? When you're recording those concerts or those DJ sets, whatever it is you're recording, are people actually going back and watching that again? No, never. never. But they're not even experiencing it. Yeah. They're watching it through a screen. Yeah. They're showing people that I did this. Yeah. Like, look at me. I'm here and I'm watching this person. Check me out. I'm cool. But nobody, like you said, nobody's enjoying concerts like they used to. Yeah. And and even, even in our phones, we take so many photos but how often do we go back and look at them remember when you'd get a photo album and occasionally you'd sit down like my mom sends me once in a while she makes some she's like the only person around I know that makes the photo album she actually is the one that is gonna look at her picture on her phone and print them Uh I never did that like you said I have easy like 20,000 pictures because there's screenshot of stuff I take all the time. It's really a bunch of shit in my my phone to be honest. 13,000 pictures. 13,000 pictures. That's like even more than me, I think. 13,000. I never look at it. Screenshots, everything. And at the end, it becomes this big junk that you never go back. And like you said, like um, before… We all lucky to have lived in before the cell phone area. So we know what it was, you know. Yeah. the, the scarcity. Mm. I remember before when, when you looked at something, you didn't know a word, you need to open a dictionary. Yep. Or you didn't know the word. You were mm. like, well, it means, pff, I don't know. You, know? Yeah. Like you couldn't just like Google and find everything. And not to sound old, maybe we sound old, but I think there was a, you couldn't like be more now. They say that even having your phone next to you is already, you're connected to it. I, and and, and it's too, a bit too much. Like, it is. It, it's, it's changed how we have conversations. Yeah. It used to be you'd go to a pub and you'd have a conversation and someone would say, you remember that movie that, um, uh, that Tom Cruise was in? What was the name of that movie? You know, and they'd explain it. And if nobody remembered the title… They just look it up. You'd, well, uh-huh. if you didn't… Now you look it up on your phone. But before you'd have to have a deep conversation until someone could kind of crack the Da Vinci code. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Minority <Yes>. report. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Now yeah. it's like, hang on. And everyone's on their phone… Uh, Tom Cruise, 2018, he filmed this, 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 and this. Which one was it? And it's yeah. like, it's but just taking the fun out of um, it. Go ahead. Because I, I think that the, the big stuff is this, like really, me, sometimes I do that. I'm with someone, we talk together, and then some, I receive some, some work and I'm going to be watching and answering. And then you're like, ah, oh, and you feel like you're listening, but you're not listening, you're not there, you're not in the moment mm. at all. So these days, I really try when I go out, really put my phone away, enjoy the moment, and go back to phone time. And there's this guy that what he made is like, he has an alarm on his uh, clock every hour and he's just checking his phone once every hour. Mm. And I 
really trying to implement this in my life and it's been failing totally because <laughs> I have an alarm on my watch that's ringing every hour. And uh, I always to check and your head already on your phone. <laughs> but I think it's a personality thing too. I mean, to be honest, we're all we're all lying to ourselves. Cell phones are badass. They are they're badass. Amazing. amazing. Oh, like, it's yeah. so awesome. I'm not saying they're, they're fucking bad. awesome. But there's a different kind of person. Like I personally, when I hang out with like, for example, if we're like going out and we're playing ball, and then we like you hang never out check phone, your we phone. never check our phones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a certain kind of person that knows where to check your phone when yes. to not check your yeah. phone. There's certain kinds of people where they they just can't. It's like it's like almost a d- disease where they oh, have to check it out. Yeah. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. So I think like we… I don't think I've ever touched my phone when I'm no. with you. No. And you know, you know… like There's people who can do that. But there's people who like you said… Just they can't get keep their hands off their phone. I think it's also because… There are a lot of people now that struggle with the art of conversation. Yeah, mm. that's true. They don't know how to converse Yo, with that's people. So that's true. true. You know, that's it's so like such a good point. This, but some what, kids what I play basketball about? with. They just like the sixteen-year-old, seventeen-year-old kids. In between games, they just like don't say a fucking word to each other. That's because yeah. you're the. That's because you're, 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 you don't have a shirt on. He's running around. He's like going up to kids and talking. And that's And it's true. Even in America, it was like this when I had my shirt on. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm saying like they don't talk as much as they used to because you talk to everybody. They're, ki- they're yeah. kids, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, watch, I, I couldn't. I couldn't hold a conversation talking. with strangers when I was 16 and 17 as well, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's if you're yeah, it's, it's when, when you're a kid, it's a little. And we we're like, we feel young, but in the end, we're just we're fucking full grown 30 yeah. something year olds to these yeah, kids I'm sure at the Soul same at time. Sixteen was talking to everybody. You're, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, like that. You're I wasn't like that though. Like you, you were sixteen when they were born. I would never talked to thirty-three year olds when I was yeah. sixteen. Like, it is yeah. There's kind of a stranger danger. Yeah. Like, stranger danger. Yeah, yeah. like it's we talked about last week. Yeah, yeah. But it's it. There are even people that are in their twenties and thirties, and 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 even people that are older than me. Yeah, that have, don't have the art of conversation yeah. anymore. It's a yeah, thing. Yeah. It's a I'll, I'll, talent. I'll, sorry, sorry. No, that's it. Yeah, no, I, I was talking with an older friend of mine that lived in Korea for like thirty years, and now he's like, oh, I'm gonna leave Korea. Because it's not like what I used to love before. Because he's a teacher, uh, a French teacher here mm-hmm. at the university. And he said, now kids, they never come talk to me. The only time they come and ask me something is like something to do with the points or the reports. And they yeah. never… And before, 10 years ago, it was like, Oh, sensei ni manio say oh, hello. And they were very interested into friends. And now it's just like, okay, get my points. Do that, do that. And he felt like it changed so much. Yeah. He's salty. <laughs> But we have. They don't care anymore. They don't care anymore. It kind of <laughs> yeah, feels of like there is there, there's almost like a, a middle ground between relationships a lot more now because we have become so connected. You know, a lot of people now it's just Catholic messages, or I know of people that communicate via email, strictly via email. So there is kind of that. I, I think you know we're so connected. We can get on our phone. We can order food, twenty four hours a day, and have it delivered to our front door. Yeah. You know, it has it's enabled us to become lazy that we don't have to initiate conversations or yeah. or re- start relationships with people. Life is so comfortable. I mean, I always have something more fun than maybe Dave, you know. I, I have the whole YouTube on my phone. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to meet Dave. <laughs> 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 but same, do you ever th- what if YouTube just like all of a sudden one day was Went like… analog? Now everyone has to pay 50 bucks a month to look at all of this. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> he'd be oh, rich. if you got the money, yeah. If you, <laughs> sure, you got paid for it. If you, if we you just made it come right now. Like. Yeah. But I think, but honestly, in the end, it's all case by case as well. You know, yeah. like you said, people are getting lazier. But at the same time, it enables like, for example, there's these applications where you can have form running groups and stuff. Yeah. And you ah, can like, stuff like that. Enough. And look at you. you. You're saying people are getting lazier. Lazier. You look skinnier than I've ever seen Let's you. Let's talk about oh that. Oh my God. You, everyone you is see this weight loss? Weight. Action Bronson. Man, I'm telling you. Something about quarantine <laughs> is making motherfuckers care about getting fit. Don't, but, you, don't you think? Because you have no choice but… Because you, you're getting scared because you feel even lazier now. Yeah. So people yeah. are going out more and trying to like… Take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I lost six kilos in the corona thing. Yeah? I gain weight so fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't look, you don't look like you did. I no. did. It's, it's here. Let, yeah. let me throw this to Julian there because I know you DJ as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a kind of… The analog digital talk with DJs, there are still a lot of DJs that use vinyl. Yeah. There are a lot of DJs that have gone digital and just use a, like a, a hard drive that they connect to a program. Sure. Yeah. Are you a, a vinyl DJ or are you a digital DJ? So me, I, 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 I don't play vinyls. Mm-hmm. But 
yeah, it's a big issue in the, you know, there's the, like the guy that only do vinyl and like everything else is, is not real DJing yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like this conversation that's been going on for a long time. And there's some truth and some really bullshit about this whole story. But one of the fact is like, once you buy a vinyl, uh, you get the connection you get with it is different. Yeah. And the vinyl you're going to bring at the party to, to DJ, you can't suddenly change. So you have to be very conscient about what you're going to play. So the whole mm. process of selection you're going to make is way more uh, way stronger. More. And you have to know where the song is going to do what because you can't just like skip or like go past or like yeah. you can't do anything. You can't see the wavelength. You can't on the, on see the, the wavelength. You can yeah. so you need to know more your stuff. So I think it's really good to create a connection. There's some um, realness about the sound quality. Some, yeah, absolutely. But the problem is that most speakers in clubs are not yeah. going to be yeah. good enough to reflect that. And also, usually, uh, a vinyl in loud environments creates a lot of um, uh, because actually the needle it's a little microphone on it. And ah, so, so you're getting re- almost like reverb. Yeah, and so sometimes a lot of if it's not well set up, you're gonna hear a really like that. And so you have to cut off the the low frequencies. Yep. And so at the end, the sound quality ends up worse than with that. So it's a give and take. I think it's really good on that on that way. But the MP3 uh, versus wave stuff because mm-hmm. wave is basically the raw file, and MP3 is a compressed version. Yep. Like I said, also it depends on the speaker of the club at the end. If you're gonna listen at home. You listen wave or MP3 is the same, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But uh, what is great with when you have your hard drive is that you can have so many songs that yeah. if ever yeah. you like, oh, this song now needs to come here. In, if ever you have only vinyls, you can't just like suddenly like create magic. Yeah. Oh, woo, I, I have it here. So it creates more diverse, more um, versatile. Mm-hmm. You're more versatile in, in your play. But it's a different approach, I think, to it. I mean, especially if you're traveling. Imagine traveling with all those LPs halfway around the world. Yeah. Like crates and crates of them. All DJ are like, I'm never going to carry vinyls again. Yeah. I remember doing that. Some people got back problems. Some, like, I know there's uh-huh. one big DJ called Ricardo Villalobos. And he had to cancel his whole tour because he was only playing vinyl for 40 years. And suddenly now his back is like, mm, so yeah. Damn. There, There is something about listening to an album on vinyl though. Yeah. I, I've started buying vinyl recently and it's just, it blows you away when you, you have put it to home. start and finish yeah. the way they made it. Yeah. And you can't skip in the middle. So I remember before, you know, when I bought a CD, I used to listen to every song, God. even the shit ones. I miss, I miss that. that so much. And I used to like them sometimes. I was like, oh, actually, it's a good song. After some repeats, you know, start to, and there was always the intro and outro and like songs that were not really songs, not hits, you know, but they were just put in the mm-hmm. middle. Yeah, I miss that. And yeah, I miss it with that. That digital has changed that. Like, I, totally. I'd, I'd skip songs on an album that I didn't like. Like, I'm just like, no, yeah. I don't want to listen to that. Yeah. Even if you just don't like the first 10 seconds. Right? Yeah. Yeah, fuck this. Let's yes. <laughs> switch on to the next one. You know, even like Spotify and these apps now, it's like, yeah, no, I'm not feeling this song. Maybe I'll listen to it tomorrow, but boom. We got to change the name of this podcast to Boomer Podcast because we've just been complaining about <laughs> yeah. phones, about how oh, lazy Man, people are. Like like <laughs> yeah, but th- 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 this it's is true. A, it's all true. Seen a little too. Bit of I agree, but <laughs> no. But here's the thing, Dave. Are, true. are we turning into our parents? We are, and that's something I. Growing up, you're like, "Fuck you! I'm not going to be I'm like not. you, mum. I'm not going to be like you, dad." But in reality, the older you get, now that I've got kids. I'm saying things my parents said to me as a child to my children. What? And I'm catching myself. I'm like, I want to put my fist in my mouth. I'm like, don't <laughs> say that to your kids. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we have become… We've become boomers. <laughs> we are. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's depressing. <laughs> no, that's I okay. kind of like it though. There's something as long as he leads the league in rebounds and I lead the league in assists. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about being… Oh, you know. <laughs> so we, uh, we, played, we played each other's teams… This past week in basketball, and I we fucking destroyed yeah, they them. Killed, killed you, oh, you beat you beat them. Yeah, we want to be on the I, same I team. Beat. They won't let us be on the same team. They won't let us be on the same team. If you yeah. saw these fucking is it because, alpines? Is it because you can only have like one heavily tattooed guy on each team? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we both. He goes first round, and I'm a captain, and I can never. Draft him. It's yeah, just, it's like an actual draft. I so look, you need to start playing like shit this season. Oh, well, I am. Yeah, he, he's been playing. <laughs> I am. No, I'm the, not the problem the best is, season ever. he's getting horrible numbers for no reason other than his teammates cannot catch his passes. Oh, but I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not on my LeBron shit. 
I can't, I can't, I can't put the other guys down. Well, it's, no, 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 it's it's not not hey, you, you know didn't. What? Dave's I'm doing it for you. I'm putting the other guys down. <laughs> no, they're, they're all great. Uh, I'm Dude, really bad about this. Oh, so wait, okay, wait, hold on. I'm not putting them down, yeah. but I have a question. Are they catching your passes? It's difficult sometimes to catch my passes because I throw really hard. Are they catching your passes? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I throw it very radically. It's very it's diplomatic. Called a pass, not yeah. the throw away in your face. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting people in the head. And <laughs> he does passes that nobody sees coming, I, including I, his teammates. Yeah. I did see something on Instagram the other day of a pass that Ooh, that elbow pass. Yeah, that, that was. I'm like, that was an amazing pass. You but you've got to have someone amazing on the receiving exactly. end of that to make it he worthwhile. The guy caught it. You know, you know who can catch his passes? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Your boy right here. Seriously. <laughs> when we play uh, random people out in like the we parks people, and stuff, yeah. we just, just stomp people. And then I take a picture with them. <laughs> While you're catting the pass? <laughs> no. It's because I'm That's Dave. why they don't want oh, you on the I'm same Dave. team. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and, then, and then they take a picture with me because I'm Dave. <laughs> well, I love playing on his team. What, yeah, we have fun. Are you having problems with your eyes at the moment? I don't think I've seen your glasses before. Oh, we're gonna are we gonna? Yeah, we were, we said that we were gonna talk that's, about that's that right it. away. Are we gonna uh, address the elephant in the room? I was gonna <laughs> say address yeah. the, the eyebrow in the room. Bum, bum. <laughs> so yeah, I don't got eyebrows. <laughs> Voldemort has entered the room. Voldemort yeah. has entered the room, or Kane from WWE. So I'm sure there are lots of people that are very curious as to why you did this. Yeah, I forgot because like I was like, why? Why is the reason? <laughs> there was yeah. actually mention of blaming Dive Studios. Yeah, so this all started through Dive Studios. Diane, <laughs> Diane, this is all Diane's fault. <laughs> um, so I met Jay from Day Six through Dive Studios through Diane, and. Uh, after we did our… I, I was a guest on his podcast. And after I did the podcast, I became really good friends with him. We started playing a lot of video games together. And mm -hmm. I just recently started uh, streaming on Twitch. Twitch.com slash D-A-E-B-B-U-I-N-G. Make sure to follow me. And, uh, <laughs> um, Love the plug. So I, I, so I go like… Yeah, I'd shave my eyebrows for a certain… Uh, we were talking about some random shit. People do crazy stuff on Twitch. And I'd be like, yeah, I'd shave my eyebrows for a certain amount of followers. Or a certain amount of subscriptions. You, paid subscriptions, of course. Mm -hmm. And then Dave's like, how many would you do it for? I'm like, Fuck. he's like a hundred. He's like a hundred, a thousand. I'm like, oh my God, I, I do way less for way… I, I do way more for way, way less. less. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I'm like, I'd fucking shave my eyebrows for 60 followers. How so, much do the, does each person pay? Like five bucks. So it's five times six or something like that. 300 bucks for no eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought about it later. And he's just like, what? That's it? I'm like, yeah, I, I'd share my eyebrows for 60 subs. Like, no problem. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And then he's like, all right, be right back. I'm like… I started like shaking. I'm like, wait, how long do eyebrows take to grow? <laughs> Suddenly, my viewers went from like 70 people to like 100 to like 500 to 2,000 to 2,500. Oh, did he Jay post it? Re tweet, Jay tweeted on his millions of followers, <laughs> K-pop, <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Dave, if Dave gets 60 followers, he's going to shave his eyebrows. Go to a stream. <laughs> did you not… You were trending on Twitter that day, weren't I you? was trending in the Philippines and Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> I had thousands of people. My chat was like this. I was shaking out of… I was just like, no, no, like, follow, 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 subscription, subscription, subscription. I got 60, I got like a hundred subscriptions in like two minutes. Oh. I, I was just wow. like, wait, this is, everyone's like, do it. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so I get on friggin' live with my friends all watching me, like, no, no. Shaving cream all over my nasty forehead and yeah. just. Just with a razor, just oh, shave wow. the shit out of my wow. eyebrows. Did that? Uh, were there not any after effects? Like, do you, you know, when you get like razor burn? Yeah, I had razor. I had eye, eyebrow burn from razor. <laughs> really? <laughs> they were burning for a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you uh, went and played dodgeball the other day, I see. and you just looked like a fucking evil. <laughs> 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 you suddenly instantly became the bad guy in the team. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Even net, like had no eyebrows, it just gives you such a different yeah. like yeah. persona. It is like a you like a villain from a James Bond film. <laughs> I kind of like it. What is it the in evolutionary way, purpose for our eyebrows? Why why do we have eyebrows? Well, Stop dude, sweat getting in your eye. 
Yeah. The, it's the big thing when eyes. I played dodgeball, my eyes were burning the entire time because I had so much water in my eyes. Oh. Is that it? And maybe it helps yeah. sun? No, it doesn't. I'm pretty sun. sure it's just pretty much <laughs> stopped. Sounds like a natural headband. Yeah. yeah. So what's, so the, what's okay. up with this back hair? This, I don't know. <laughs> to, keep, any, to, keep, uh, to keep sweat from mistake, my butthole? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there may be uh, some people that have certain kinks and it's for like holding on to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chest hair. What's so my great, 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 great uncle had an ass fetish. Well, I don't know. It's like, what does a hair in your ass do? <laughs> what does it? I don't know what the point do? of it is. All it does is make it harder to clean up when I take a shit on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what waxing's for. Pitch it uh, out with a cut. Yeah. <laughs> That's what waxing's for. Have you guys ever waxed? Got waxed? Yes, I did it one time. Yeah. And actually, I did it at a place that apparently Sam did it. At. Like, like, like the bottom area over in uh, no. Yeah, because yeah. she, she she told me, oh yeah, he came here and he, he you love to get the nose hair. I well, I got. My nostrils waxed after I'd had my Brazilian. Does Did it you hurt? sneeze like crazy? No, it was. Does it hurt? It, nostrils are fine. It's the Brazilian that hurt. Do you, do you shit, get it down yeah, there? Yeah, Brazilians down there? was for like, girls. Yeah, I've had it all. Like I've had. Wait, do they, do they just? Uh, do, 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 do they see your cock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, she, it, the woman, the woman that runs the store. So she has to wax it all up, and then she's like putting, and she has like strips of whatever. Yeah. That she puts down on the wax and just vapes it all out. Yeah, but isn't it kind of sensual to have somebody like rub well, actually, wax I around actually, the? I actually asked her about it, and she said there are people that come in on occasion and get, you know, massive boners. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, they kind of get the half hard on. Um, but you, for me, it wasn't because there's pain involved. Yeah, like it's painful, and like yeah. it's not like you think about it. Oh, someone and actually no, it's like vroom, vroom. Yeah, she's really professional about it. Like. And and I mean, did you, get, did you get the same thing done? Yeah, everything okay. one time. Putting I was like cream around like the tip <laughs> place of your. It's don't touch wax. my hand when you talk about your dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Yo, if you got fucking like a thousand subscribers for shaving yeah. these puppies on the internet, oh, dude. imagine how many but, subs you could get if you waxed that thing. <laughs> oh my god! But, that, but yeah, but you kind of have to you have some prove kind of it. evidence. Yeah, you can't prove it. <laughs> Why? There's no like a Tumblr they, version of. <laughs> they ban him. On they ban him if he did that. Is on there like Hub, Twitch live. X? <laughs> Twitch, Twitch X. Hub? Oh, hang on. Twitch didn't, Hub no. Didn't you get only an invitation fans. for fans only? Uh, only fans, yeah. Only fa That's what you could do. Uh, only fans can be <laughs> the Brazilian wax. You're allowed to show your dick well, on Only fans is, only uh, fans is a fan service web like application it's website. It's like Patreon a bit, no? Yeah, it's a, yeah but… You put dirty pictures well, on not there. Really? Yeah. Um, How many pictures do you put of you? I haven't done it yet. <laughs> What's, I uh, might though. Cardi B. <laughs> Cardi B signed up recently and she said she's not going to do that. There, I think that there are people that are getting on that site and are using it for more personal pictures that haven't been shown anywhere else. Not necessarily sexual. Do you have to be 18 to join it? I no, yeah, so don't. This no. seems like a you have to be pedophilia case. Only in fans, when, it has to be. It has to be eighteen. 18 yeah. it's eighteen only. If you're allowed to post, I was making boots. jokes with my like my Discord, my community. Like, it's usually uh, content creators. They usually go up there and they put their nude photos mm -hmm. yeah. for people to see. It's kind of like a pe paid extra service, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was telling, but since I got invited to my OnlyFans, I was saying I'm gonna. Just layers and layers of clothes. Cover up as much skin as I can <laughs> on my OnlyFans. Just, just layers and layers. Gloves. <laughs> everything. Most clothing ever. <laughs> Sunglasses. There was a beehive in my, in my best friend growing up's backyard one time. And we wanted to kill it. Like just go in and destroy them with like bug sprays and stuff. And I'm super allergic to bees. So we just put on like literally every item of clothing he had in the entire house. Like unnecessary. Put goggles on top of like… Did it work? Headbands and everything. Yeah, I mean like literally like 50 layers of clothes. Like until like we couldn't move. Was it scary? And just dove in there. Yeah, it was still scary wow. even with all that. And just like dove in it with bug spray. We were dropping like ma Macho Man Randy Savage like <laughs> elbows and shit onto him. It was really funny. It's the kind of shit that I… That's that's something I wish I had filmed so that I could show it. Yeah. You know? yeah. The this topic of conversation actually kind of gets me thinking in a different direction about passion economy. So it's like what you were talking about. For me, if you'd filmed that, that would be an example of you could monetize that like jackass. Yeah, yeah. Or like only fans. It's like, you know, people doing things that they like, but being able to monetize it and make a living off of it. YouTube. Um, Patreon. Examples of this. You know, Etsy. 
people are doing what they love to enjoy, but they're starting to make a living out of it. Mm-hmm. Do you consider but, your job a passion <laughs> job? I, There's definitely is, right? Both of you guys are pa- passion. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. What? DJ, once yeah, once but it I becomes mean, work, I mean, it changes. I, I, yeah. Once I, it becomes work, it changes. Yeah, it's not fun for me anymore. I guess for me, I enjoy what I do, but it's not a passion as in I don't have complete creative control over everything. Yeah. Yeah. But even if I did, it, when it becomes, you know, a weekly thing or, or a daily thing, and you have to con- continually do that because you've got fans that have an expectation. I think that would kind of start eliminating the passion, like Dave said. But, but I mean, like, I think then if ever you go back to a normal job, maybe you go, okay, I, my job before yeah. was way yeah. more amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's still incredible to be able to do what you like. And I'm sure that there's some liberties, like, especially that that is amazing. Like me, for example, you know, in, in terms of like, I want to go back to, to, to Europe anytime I can just like, hey, I go, you know, I can tell everybody to stop the stuff. I, I can take my holiday when I want. If I don't want to work for a while, I can not work for a while. And there's some liberties you can take that normal people maybe cannot take with a more regular job. But yeah, once it becomes something, everything becomes a bit less fun. And like, you know, I have this guy, he makes house music. Mm-hmm. And when he listens to house music, he's going to analyze everything. Because yeah. you can't just be there and enjoying yourself anymore. It's your job, you know? And I'm sure you, when you watch YouTube, you must be all the time, oh, what is he doing? What kind of content is he doing? Like, there's some stuff in your head maybe that's It's more like TV now. Yeah? I know Sam understands that. When you, or you, you, you do too. Do you guys ever watch TV programs now? And you know how, like, they have, like in Yenning, the variety of programs, Mm -hmm. they have all this funny stuff that happens, all these situations that happens. Do you guys ever watch it and just think like, they're stopping in between or there's a lady holding up a thing telling them what to say. Mm-hmm. Or do you guys ever like… It, not even that. Do you, you just feel how fake it at, is? I can look at situations and I can say, okay, <clears throat> you'll look at something that's happening on TV, the things you'll pick out. Okay, that's product placement. There's a certain item that's being used. Or you'll go, okay, yeah. that's not completely natural. That's yeah. been set up. That's yeah. something that's been pre-prepared. That's scripted. That. Yeah, you start looking at things and, and for me, I'm incredibly analytical of TV shows and I'll have people, I'll be sitting next to someone and I'm like, that's all set up. That's, and and, and like, you can tell about that. I can tell. They else, can't but. tell. And that's, but that's part of my job. I do it for a living so I know exactly. <laughs> when someone says certain things, and especially if I know the person personally, you can tell there's certain gives and they're giving up, you know, the secrets. But and it, it's like the whole stuff for me that was weird with the, the, the product placement scandal that was mm-hmm. in Korea. Like some of it, for me, it was like, it was so obvious that it's yeah. product placement. Like, don't people know? But actually, I think many people didn't know. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know. That's what I mean. Yeah. Because we are in the industry. We think like, well, of course, it's obvious. Of course, they yeah. paid for it. <laughs> what, what about the cringy shit? You guys ever see TV shows? Which one? Here in Korea. Like when the, the episode starts where, where they're sleeping. And then like, <laughs> they wake up. Yeah, I always think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like… 30 minutes before, there was just like four sweaty dudes like setting up cameras in the corner and setting up the GoPros. So the guy's just sitting there on his phone. All right, act like you're sleeping now. But we, they, did, they, we did that on Now and Just Never did that? They, when we they, were on Now and Just yeah, yeah. they were always… They were just they, like, all right, Saul, so, yeah, I want you to like act like you just woke up and just do what you do. Do the dishes with some music on. But it's, <laughs> it's not even that because they've got a pin mic. Yeah. yeah. They have a microphone. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so you went to bed with the microphone on. But now you're awake and we can hear your voice perfectly. Oh, that's… You know. Or they've got… A, you know. They've got… Done their, got their hair all done. They've got a full the face bit. of makeup. You like, went to sleep A little like bit that? too much makeup yeah, as well. Yeah. It would have been all over your fucking pillows. Yeah. I, actually, I, I, I just <laughs> breathe the shop to my bed when I sleep. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. My, the, and when I wake up, the pillow is fucking yellow from drool. <laughs> <laughs> Not makeup. No, but like, I think like TV is scripted and, and every, even every reality show, I mean, and people shouldn't know that, that people really. People don't know. But they should, I mean, that's why we're talk, talking about that oh, now. Yeah. But like, cause, because yeah. it's a, it's not a drama. You don't have a full mm. script of what you need to say. And many situations also happen just very naturally. You know, like yeah. when I did the TV show with my, with my nephew, when he came here, you can't control everything. And I'm sure with, with Sam and the kids, I mean. Once there are kids involved, you can't control everything. Did William really take your pants when you guys went to the yeah. pool the other day? That's cool. I mean, there, <laughs> that was there, funny as fuck. With kids, it, it's a, such a different monster because <laughs> you can't, you know, 
you tell a kid to do something, even as a parent, I tell my children to do something and they won't do it. He really didn't want to go They refuse to do it. No. So, you know, you put them in that situation. You can't expect them to kind of, well, well, we'd like you to do this. It's not going to happen. You create a situation where stuff might happen well and trying to get all the stuff together, but… It's a, I, I like to call it a framework. Yeah. You have a framework a within kid. which you work. It, but there are certain situations where it's a lot more intense and, and people, you know, are off screen giving suggestions as to yeah. how you should be doing certain things. With kids, is it like… Are there, are there any things on the, that happens on the show where you're just like, yo, you can't do that or like things that alert you with your kids? Well, I'm, I'm more curious about what goes into doing variety mm. shows with kids. His kids I mean, are just like so cute. They can't, just can't, film them and well, yeah, but you, entertain. Certain, but there are, certain, like, there are certain situations. What, about, what if your kid's super tired or really stressed out or something? You're like, we got, yeah. have you ever oh, been yeah, like, no, we got to yeah, stop? I, I, the, there are plenty of times where I'm, I'm like, okay, we're going to finish. The kids need to eat. Then they need a nap. Yeah, and and that's just me. I I have guidelines within mm. which I have to work as well. Which and my children, yeah, yeah. they have a, a regular pattern yeah, yeah. that they have to maintain. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm very strict about that. Okay. And I, I I think you know that's something we need to do as as people in the industry is we need to kind of set up personal standards and say, look, you know, I need this, I need that. You don't have to be an asshole about it. I mean, we're all working. It, it's you know we're working together, but. There are certain situations where some people take it a little too far. Does yeah, William yeah. know he's different? That his life is different? See, here's the thing. I he's, he's starting to realize, right? He, he knows because people come up to him and, and say, hi, William, and, and ask for photos and whatnot. He's never seen himself on television. I, re- I won't let him watch the And TV he's like, show. bitch, I'm trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm like, people are like, can I get a photo with him? I'm like, you need to ask him. You know, it's his prerogative if he wants to take Whoa. a photo. What, what, what does he, he say? say? He's like, hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? I'm like, I'm like, cool. So, always? So I'm like, he always says no? It depends on the situation and who the person is. Yeah. But I'm like, if he says no, I'm sorry. I can't force him to take a photo. Is he partial to prettier, to like pretty women? Then like ugly? <laughs> I, I'm sure. And like ugly like people he's, come up and he's like, nah, man, you too ugly. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. He is partial to um, people that are in certain communities that he's involved in, whether it's a sporting community, they play a similar sport yeah. or um, similar age or, or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, he knows he's like, he knows he did the Soul Milk ad. Like, yeah. he's seen that on TV and we'll drive by the bus stops and he's yeah. like, stop, stop, stop. And he winds like, That's down, my shit. No, 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 no. Winds down the window and he'll yell at people at the bus stop. He'll be like, so do you. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, what the? That's cute. That is so That's awesome. sick. And it's with, I, there's so many times I've been in the car with him. It's been so funny because people have like heard it and they look and they're like, like they did like a double triple take. That's amazing. That's hilarious. But he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't know he's on TV and I want to try and keep that because otherwise. It changes. Yeah, it doesn't become natural anymore. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but there's something really that, that changed a bit my perspective. My, my, my perspective. Pros- perspective. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> my perspective of uh, kids and TVs because now I have uh, nephews. And, and to be honest, like before, when I saw kids like Sam on TV and stuff, I was a bit critical. Like, oh, if I was a dad, I would never let my, my parents. But then my, my, my sister, you know, she has a kid. And you just did a bunch and, of TV with them. No, I did that. Yeah, but more than that, it's like the Instagram becomes a kid because the life becomes your kid, you know? And like… The kid and you become… You can't just like… Separate. Be yeah. separate that strongly, you know? And it's a great way to pass time with the… Of course, you might have some questions like… Oh, to what age would I want to do that? And maybe mm-hmm. I'm sure you must have thought about this a lot or so. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. But, but once I, I, I did it, I, I realized how… Uh, once it's your kid and it's so different, you know? It, it's not the same question as… <laughs> me as a non-parent, I can't have an opinion really… Yet. I'm sure if I have yeah, a yeah. kid, then maybe I'm going to change, it's, you know? I, I, when you say it like this, I guess for me, you asked if my job is my passion. Yeah. When I'm working with my kids, that is my passion because mm. my family is first and foremost always. Yeah. And one of the best things about it is I get to go and look back at the footage that we've accumulated over so many years and it's memories. Oh, it's amazing memories. Because… Huh? If I'm talking to you like this, but we've got cameras all around here mm-hmm. and you turn away and maybe say something to yourself mm-hmm. in the corner or, you know, you and Dave have a, a moment with, 
you know, lovey dovey eyes or something. I may not see that in real life, <laughs> but I can go and watch it on the footage. Yeah. So I'm seeing things that I didn't personally yeah. experience oh, in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. And that for me is probably the best thing. Different perspective. Yeah. A complete yeah. you have multiple different perspectives yeah. because you have multiple cameras in that one place. And seeing your experiencing your memory in a different yeah. point in, of view. In, yeah. And that's like huge. a You probably do your first videos when you had like oh, just come to Korea and you were in stop. love with it. Oh well maybe you don't like oh. some parts of that. Oh it's <laughs> but, so cringy. It might be cringy, but it also takes you back to a time. Yeah, if I, I go back so. to my first neighborhood that I lived in Korea, I cry, dude. Like it reminds me of like how excited I was about life. I bet you, you look back at those like Suwon. <laughs> yeah, I bet you look back at your Yulmian memories. Memories like, man, that's sick that I made. That I don't. Memory. I don't know, man. I, I like no? the last few years, but I don't know about before that. Really? And maybe, maybe not now, but maybe a few years down the track, it'll be. You know, I was. A, I was. I was a fucking idiot. So <laughs> I don't know. I like the last few years better. Yeah. Let me let me make a positive note to end on. Other than I hate my past. <laughs> <who> I <am. laughs> so I you hate, hate yourself. I hate we can't who I really was. erase your history. Though, I hate my too. What yeah. is it exactly that you didn't like about yourself that is better now? It's, I was I was just I was uh, um I was just very immature. I, I like mature Dave better. That's all. I like yeah. mature Dave better. I like the people I'm surrounded by now, and that's all. Some people sometimes they're like, "Oh, I wish I was twenty again." I love me now. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Let's Dude. yo. Let's love each. Let's love each other for who we are now, and let's kiss. This is a real. <laughs> I, I'm down. There's, everybody uh, always says this went very the, fast. Thirty wow. is like the new twenty. I mean, but and it sounds like corny, but it's like thirty is way better than twenty. So much oh. better. There's like no, you lose. No, I mean, my knees hurt a little bit more, <laughs> but other than that, like it, thirty is so much better. Yeah, all of awesome. the things, all of the like. I'm more relaxed. Yeah, about yeah. a lot of stuff. So, 40s are not that bad either. Yeah. Oh, I, I like to hear that. Yeah. I For me, 30s were better than my 20s. I'm actually enjoying my 40s more than my 30s. My 30s were, were great. But but without kids, would it be the same? It, maybe not. And I think like having kids and in my 40s and having that family life, it's a new chapter of life. But I love it because you've got world experiences and, and you can just be a lot more objective with life. And I think… That's what makes it much more enjoyable as you get older. Are we ever gonna have kids together? Oh, one kiss, yeah, together. <laughs> it doesn't work. Dude. Dude. <laughs> I would have been gay, David, but baby. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have kids. I want to make so much fucking Actually, content. You know it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but much you know they, they they make this happen now. They take the sperm of two guys and they make the sperm into. <laughs> Uh, One mega sperm. And ovule. <laughs> Yo, how sick would that baby be? Yeah. yeah. It works. They take the sperm, put the egg, they create one thing, and then they put another sperm to the new egg so you can have a baby with three person now. That's bullshit. Dude. Nah. <laughs> just they make that, that happen. Dude. Check it. No way. No. Really? See, the, the, Super the, the, sperm? No, the problem with it. With like, what do they just really? put it in like a yeah. shot glass and I'm stir not it around? So when, when, if they mix it, it's, it, it's <laughs> random. Mix it in like, if they <laughs> mix it, it's random. You don't know if the two of you have both put your sperm in together and mix it up. Only one of you can impregnate that egg. That's what I'm saying. So you don't know who it is. But that's what they're doing. Like for people that are same sex partners. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So yeah, it's so. just so it's equal. Just, uh, but, 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 but now what they invented but, but, is… But what Julian's saying is two different eggs. But no. Can, it's, it's like… They, yeah, it is the one where they take the sperm and make it an egg out of it. Because yeah. now you can do these kind of changes. Mm -hmm. And it's… Pretty crazy because it's gonna take the DNA and put it in another egg, and so it becomes your DNA inside that egg, and after you guy. So now it's crazy what they're doing with that. Oh, so it's like a man egg. You can have that, and also a man you can egg. have. There are certain yeah, countries. There are certain countries that will uh, tell you the sex of the egg before it's implanted in the IVF process. That's illegal here in Korea and a lot of other Western countries, but I know of at least one country that will do it for you. All right, guys. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us, Julian. Oh. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank we you so much. It. it really flies yeah. by, right? Yeah. yeah. Time flew, I, I, right? I don't know if ever like we actually did something or like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's kind of what we do here. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. This it's was cool. content. Uh, thank this you so much for the invitation. It was cool talking with you guys. And anytime you want to hear some French accent here, I'm 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 always uh, disponible. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. Can you say Ooh la la? Ooh la la. Okay. Oh, love it. Love it. Way better also, than if, if you've got anything that you'd like to plug, now's the time to do it, whether it's your uh, Instagram or any events you've got planned or anything coming up. Um, there's actually nothing special now. Okay. What about <laughs> not even the agenda thing that you're working on? Like the 
city council stuff that you're working on? I mean, now everything's tough because of Corona. So my he said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Respect my choices. Belgian Le- people have a voice too. <laughs> leave it. Leave it. Okay. Make, make a child with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, th- thank you for joining us again. Of course, uh, don't forget you can find us on Instagram at Twitter and Twitter at the Dive Studios. You can find us on YouTube as well, uh, backslash Dive Pods, and get on Spotify and, and leave Apple Podcast a review. Exactly. Yeah, and you can tell us what you want us to talk about and stuff on there too, right? And that's we'll do it. Yeah, the reviews mean so much to us. Means so much to us. Leave a five star review and say Dave's thick ass brought you here. Uh, and <laughs> something, please, guys, don't put a four star review or a three star review. There's only zero or five. Four is I don't like. Why zero? zero? Don't say that. Don't. Why we zero? Don't You're don't give them the option of zero and five. <laughs> don't, what? don't no. Don't. <laughs> say it's either a four or a five. Not a zero and a five. We don't condone this behavior. <laughs> some, <laughs> some kid right now is sitting what here like happened? trying to help but not helping at all. Oh <laughs> uh, God! Some kid is sitting here like I was about to give them five stars, <laughs> and then Dave <laughs> so oh, I'm about started to talking three, about no. that muted to basketball baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then Julian said it's either a zero or five so i'm giving them a zero Thank you, <laughs> love it all right. uh, you're welcome thank, guys thanks, thanks so much for joining us guys all right right on yeah. i'm good for promotion okay <laughs> if you need a marketing guy <laughs> on that note uh we'll see you again next week see you guys next week bye Peace. bye hope you enjoyed the clip if you did listen to the full episode on apple podcast or spotify and make sure to subscribe to this channel dive studios and put those notifications on hit that bell Boop, boop, boop.